Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Bonnie, and I'm joined by Leah, Katie, and Barb talking about our one cool culinary gal. Katie already talked about Ina Garden, the Barefoot Contessa, and Barb already talked about Ruth Fortell of Ruth Chris Steakhouse. But before we dive back in, Lee's going to tell us what's on the Gal's Guide calendar for this week. And I just want to say you did so good at not that. that I'm not that was, Katie this time. That was exceptional work right there. <laughs> I was, I'm just, I'm welling up with tears. It was so good. <laughs> so for week three, for the week of February 20th through the 26th, on Wednesdays we write. So join us at Gals Guide Library on Wednesday at 4.30 for Writer's Galaxy. It's a wonderful time for writing and connecting with other writers. Then on February 23rd at 8 p.m., Book Club meets to talk about Coming to My Senses, The Making of a Counterculture Cook by Alex. Alice Waters. That is kind of a sea mouthful. Yes. And I'm looking at Katie because Katie runs book club and I love it. So we meet on <laughs> Zoom. So register at book, register for book club at galsguide.org. Then on Saturday, February 25th at 10 a.m., Tara Circle continues with our book study of Wisdom Rising by Lama La. Uh, it is the same thing. We meet on Zoom. So register for that wonderful link beforehand. And check out all of our calendar events at galsguide.org. Now I think Bonnie is going to continue this wonderful <laughs> awesomeness with a question for us, which you don't usually get to do the I question. Know, I don't get to ask the questions. <laughs> yes. I want to know uh, what's like the favorite thing you've like grown in your like garden to like eat or like what you would want to grow mm. in your, your imaginary or one day <laughs> garden, garden thing. Exactly. You had mentioned chickens and yes. now that's, all my head is thinking about. I'm thinking about chickens and I'm thinking about eggs. Oh my gosh. All right. That is all I can I think can of. Jump in. I can yes, jump in. go and for it. It's not something yes. that I've grown. Yeah. Um, but my grandmother used to watch mm. me when I was growing up and uh, she would come to our house and across the street. Like we lived in city ish, mm. but across the street there was an open lot and they turned it into a garden. That oh, like a community garden. garden? Yeah. Well, it wasn't really a community garden. Okay. It was just right. a guy's just, garden. I don't even it. think it was his lot, but it was his <laughs> garden. <laughs> Over gorilla gardening is basically what you're telling me. Okay, got it. It gets worse. He grew (laughs) rhubarb. Yes, my grandmother loved rhubarb. Yeah, rhubarb pie. Yeah, she would Mm -hmm. totally. She's like, you know, I'll make a rhubarb pie. I didn't even really like rhubarb. She's like, but you need to go steal some rhubarb for me. (laughs) So she would send me and my brother. We would go over and steal the rhubarb (gasps) when no one was looking. (laughs) Bring it back to grandma so she could have a rhubarb pie. (laughs) I'm I'm sure it's worth it. Yeah, I didn't really grandma. Even, yeah, grandma loved it. Grandma <laughs> loved go. it. It she made grandma happy. happy. It made her there happy. There you go. And so no one really owned so the So that land, is my so. favorite. How about no, that? That no, was my no, favorite like story. It's a great gardening story. Yeah. <laughs> Does that. anyone ever eat anything else with like rhubarb? Like no. that's the only thing I ever hear is rhubarb pie. So I've heard. On the Great British Bake Off, they used it a lot, but everything they made it with, I went, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been on, I've been on uh, cruises where, you know, mm-hmm. they always have some weird dishes and I guess they were on a rhubarb kick. So it was not only rhubarb pie, but they made rhubarb ice cream. Oh, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Thank I, you. I passed on that yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, not not nice. was savory okay. with it though. Maybe. Yeah. I'd have to, mm-hmm. have to do a quick Google, but. I'll eat it if Katie puts it in something. Yeah. <laughs> like that I will be my exception. I have made rhubarb pie before and I was impressed. Yeah. I liked it. I like the pie. Good. Good. See. So. I have gardened before, and I like it, but I'm not good at it. Gotcha. I haven't gardened lately because Gunner chews holes in every garden mm. hose I've ever bought. This He's is true. destroyed four. So you can't even so it's hard water, to water the plants. Yeah, because yeah. I can't. But um, one year, Jonah and I grew pumpkins, and I had never grown oh, pumpkins before. Pumpkins. I was un prepared for how far they vine oh yeah, yeah. I gotcha i yeah. was we were parking in the garage and one day i opened the back door and realized the vining had gone across the backyard from the garden plot and was like attacking almost the garage door oh, oh my no goodness. i think we got like two pumpkins but <sighs> oh pumpkin. our it bunnies was cool we've tried pumpkins and cantaloupes the bunnies eat them yeah they, hmm. them. they don't even end up getting anywhere is yeah. it bunnies and I love having yeah. my fresh herbs, especially when you use them as like decor yes. on your tables on the back porch. Mm. I still do herbs. Yeah. Now the, yeah. that, rem- okay, basil. 
Okay. So I, Josh will grow basil. It never lasts long enough. I always want more basil. If I could just have a field of basil, <laughs> my life would be happy. Because then I could have, um, oh, what do you call it? The pesto. Because okay. then I could have pesto all the time. No. I could have it in salads. I, the caprese salad. Yes, <gasps> please. I love everything basil. Like I put it on pizza. I would put it on everything. So a field of basil. That's what I want, body. <laughs> With chicken. so good. <laughs> cut that basil. Yes. Exactly. What would your dream thing? You have a lot in know. your I have garden. A lot of stuff going. Yeah. Um, but favorite or the last dream? couple of years, I've been struggling growing just like your regular plain ass green pepper. Ah. It's like mm. like the regular one, the like varieties like California Wonder or something. Gotcha. It's like your standard green pepper. I don't know why. Like it the first two start. years, I had some kind of like weird virus thing it wasn't quite a leaf virus but like the leaves would just kind of turn yellow and fall off and but like the rest of the plant was fine and i figured it was from you know i'd growing pepper plants and i'm at the garden store i'm like i can use a couple more (laughs) so i think when i brought them home the the virus like moved to the restaurant and i'm like i'm not buying any more at the garden center right but like for like i can grow all kinds of like hot peppers but the last couple of years huh. little green peppers have been they have eluded me. you so far but now i've got like three different other types okay. of green pepper like different yeah. varieties to try yeah I'm gonna get some freaking green peppers okay. well, keep I us think, updated i think this is your year yes yeah. i think so. i believe I think in it you. is i think it is i can mm-hmm. love a pepper like i would eat peppers with every freaking meal see like, there you go it's your basil right yep yeah but you just yeah one of these days who do you have for us, darling? I have. Oh, I'm trying to remember what they what her little um thing is called. Let's see if I can find it. What her reference. thing is called? Her little like. I'm trying to like figure out how I could. Uh... <laughs> I don't know where <laughs> we're know, going with this. Exactly. Know. I'm like, thingy. I've got nothing. <laughs> uh, her not quite title. Oh, okay. Wait, gotcha. Uh, kind of like uh, well, like the Empress of um, yeah. uh, Empress yeah. of Steaks, that sort yeah. of honorary titleishness uh, sort of thing. Bum 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 bum. And I'm not even sure who you have picked because you were between a couple of different ladies when you were thinking about your research. So yeah, and so it's not Typhoid Mary then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm like I've been very tempted. I'm like. Mm. You're like, but where can Typhoid Mary fit into this podcast really, at some I've time? I really wanted to do like a little uh, illustration of Typhoid Mary with like keep a big on. old bowl with a, like a thing mix it. It just says, keep on cooking. And I'm like, but that's so bad. I can't do that. Yeah, but it's so bad. It's keep good. It. It's like it goes right past one into the other. And it's it's a nice little full circle. Oh, drink. she's called something. Okay. like Like the Empress of measurements or it's something like okay, that gotcha we have show notes it's something so yeah let's just call her the empress of but measurements it's something, it's something like that, <laughs> something like yes. that but it like rhymes or something it's uh. but i'm doing but her her real name is even better because yeah. it's fanny fanny i love I me like a it. gal named fanny yes you do like, if they don't have four names, their name better be Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, going to talk about Fanny Farmer. Fanny Farmer. Uh, who's born in 1857 in Boston. Okay. And her father was like a printer. And she was one of four sisters who all got a high school education. Nice. Which was good for back in 1850. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but they could only afford to send one of them to college. Oh no! Which Did, was going to be Fanny. Okay, she I was didn't like, know they rock paper scissored the situation. <laughs> <laughs> which Did one's they, going to Did college? They do rock paper scissors. Pack Two out of three. I think it so. Was, I think uh, it started in eighteen twenty three. It was uh, <laughs> Boulder. <laughs> didn't look it up, by the way. I have no idea. If that's just, right we're just making up facts. I'm also like. killing Katie now. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Boulder parchment shears. <laughs> Their parchment shears. Yes, I like it. Yes. Um, Yeah, they could only send one, though, and it was going to be Fanny. Okay, cool. And this was, like, right at the time when colleges were starting to accept women, too. And she's living in Boston. That's, you know, the college town, so she didn't even have to live home. Um, But when she was 16, she contracted... uh, There's, like... I mean, we don't know what people had 
back in the day. But they think it was probably polio. Oh, yeah. And this was right before the polio outbreak started happening. So there's So they didn't really know quite what it was. Sometimes people say it was a stroke. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, But she just kind of woke up one day and... Was couldn't feel her legs right oh there which is a symptom of polio yeah, yeah that kind of like paralyzation yeah immediate so like they called the doctor and they were trying to just like massage her legs yeah, to get yeah. her legs working and they're like yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah those don't work anymore <laughs> so she was like <laughs> take some cocaine and call us later <laughs> yeah i know it's like yeah, you got uh-huh. you know ghosts in your blood it's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, love that old-timey medicine but yeah she was <laughs> like uh, bedridden and stuff for like a long time they were kind of like well you know she's defective now she can't go to college they were like really bad with people with with, like diseases back then they're like meh no they're (laughs) right they're not useful anymore oh my gosh like oh at least they didn't put her in a home (laughs) i know i'm very surprised especially with her being a woman right like they could have very easily sent her off to just you know yeah the home for the whatever right exactly wayward women i think is what they called them which had they were calling a giant blanket of things yes (laughs) um but yeah yeah this is about 20 years before the first big outbreak at least in uh the u.s in vermont um, but she eventually got better. Sweet. Um, and she worked as a mother's helper for a family friend for a while. Okay. And she Is ended like up... like a nanny? Yeah. Like, you would help okay. with, like, housework and okay. the kids and stuff. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so, at know. this point, she had regained... Yeah. She was able to, like, walk and stuff back again. I think she was using a cane for a while. Um, but, yeah. Like, she felt like she had to help out in some way right yeah um but while she was telling anybody my legs worked again and then at night i'd go do what i want <laughs> oh, <laughs> and my sneak legs back in the work. house <laughs> no. oh just my legs can't can't help. Help. you'd be like my grandpa charlie work. and <laughs> yeah <laughs> Willy wonka uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> grandpa charlie you're healed <laughs> perfect <laughs> um Grandma Katie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, goodness. I'm just picturing Katie in a bed. And you I know. Like, right. like the beer <laughs> tab pop. Oh, I can walk. Where did that come from? <laughs> How is it still cold? It's <laughs> <laughs> a uh, lovely vision. It's I know, a right? miracle. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. But she ended up going to a uh, Boston cooking school. Oh, cool. I think it was called The Boston Cooking School. No. Um, <laughs> How original. How did it get that title? I know, right? <laughs> wow. Great marketing. <laughs> but this is so she could uh, like learn cooking more okay. to help her with her uh, helping Mother's out. Mother's helper a, yeah. job. Um, but they focused on like the science of cooking. Oh, like, they cool. were very much of like, you didn't even like really cook much. Mm. It was like you were learning like chemistry huh. of cooking. Okay. And, like, there were classes where you learned about baking bread, but you only, like, mixed the bread. dough. Like, you never actually put it in the oven. What? <laughs> I mean, granted, tease. if you can do the other parts, it will bake yeah. in the oven. Well, they just, and they the other part's harder. Yeah, they didn't have time to, like, wait for it to rise or whatever Dude, in the class. Dude, that's a waste so of they... bread. <laughs> I'm sure somebody ate it at some point yes. to get home. But... Oh, my God. <laughs> Can't be bothered with baking it. Yeah. Uh, but after a year of being at the school, she was hired as the assistant principal. Oh, okay. And then Sweet. when the principal left, she became the principal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she eventually, like, her big thing was like cooking back then was like so random. Where you basically learned it from just watching other people mm-hmm. do it. And participate. It was like, you know, traditions gotcha. you pass on and whatever. And there was like really like... an apprenticeship or something. Uh, usually, like, from, like, being in someone's home. Like, you learn oh. your grandma's recipe oh. by oh, helping her it. make, you know... Got it. You know, the chicken noodle soup or whatever. It and doing it by memory. Yeah. And, and grandma look, always look used feel. this wooden cup to put mm. <laughs> this Pinch in this. there. So. Mm. Dash of that. <laughs> That's the thing. They didn't have standardized measurements. They would just be like... A good amount of this right and they didn't have like ovens and mm-hmm. what we would call ovens today they had like 
uh, wood burning ovens. Yeah. So you couldn't control the temperature. Right. right. And a lot of recipes didn't tell you how long to leave something in right. either. Good like gracious. for like for its minutes <laughs> or like until it's golden brown. Like right. they were just like, cook this thing. Right. I have a hard enough time with recipes today. Uh, where it spells fire. everything out. <laughs> right. I well. would have failed miserably back Fanny then. Fanny Farmer is okay. going to fix that for you. Yay! Because she's the one that like standardized like... How much, like, you should put, like, a cup and a teaspoon. Like, mm-hmm. everyone nice. had teaspoons back then, but not everyone's teaspoons were the same, same size. size. Right, yeah. right. And she was very much, like, you don't do a heaping cup. You you level, level it off. Up. Scrape it off. That's nice. where that science comes in. Yeah, then but she was like, nice. you know, if this is a science and you're supposed to, you know, in science, you have to replicate what you've done. Yes. If you don't have the standardized measurements, you're going to get a different result every, every time. time. Mm-hmm. So she's like, some people can learn by doing it, but a lot of people need a mm. exact recipe to follow. I need it. Yeah. Barb yeah. needs it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also need uh, to have it spelled out, tablespoon or teaspoon, because I mess that up time. a lot. <laughs> every time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah. Is this the big one or the little one is a lot of times of what I'm saying I to I have myself. to always like, triple check because I'm like, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she wrote a cookbook and the publisher didn't want to like back her. So oh. I think she like self-funded oh, sweet. the books. And they were like, well, you know, if if you pay for them to be printed... Like, we'll advertise it or something. Like, they, they didn't have faith that it's, like, it's a cookbook. Right. right. It's a woman with her little cookbook. Right. So they were like, Meh. These are things people memorize. Why would they purchase it? Hmm. Hmm. But they ended up doing, like, several reprintings of the book, like, Ooh. for just that first one. That's the Fanny Farmer cookbook. Which Eventually, I've, after like the third printing, I was gonna say, does do that I've heard of this? Yeah, yeah. So it's familiar. I mean, I think it's I've seen a, reprints and reprints. And oh yeah, kind of they stuff. kept like yeah. printing that at least until like the nineties. Like it's ah. been a thing. And uh, I want to say that they still use the name in some context, but I don't know. But keep going. Yeah, as I Google. <laughs> I think I think I've seen it. I'm I'm mm-hmm. googling it now. It's I've been like it. it's. It is like the book when Julia Child was learning to cook. Oh. She referenced the family farmer. Oh, cookbook. Nice. It's been like nice. a thing. Like 40s and 50s housewives. She's the Fanny Farmer oh. cookbook. We can get it from thrift books. Uh-huh. Really? And there is some oh, weird, huh. weird shit in there. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> like, like how to make jello? It's weird. They were nuts <laughs> about jello. Yeah. Because they were, um, yeah, they wouldn't weird. all. Back then, like it was, you wouldn't just buy the powdered gelatin. Like no. you had to actually boil your own hooves yeah. and like make jello. Oh, oh my or gosh. she yeah. was from Boston, and they had some kind of like seaweed alternative. Yeah, which I think is like well, I got the vegan okay. stuff for jello, and it was like algae or something. So I think it was like that. I watched um, some old timey cooking show, and they were talking about the jello explosion of that right before the 1900s, and I'm like. Never again. <laughs> like, it sounded like, you know, in the Midwest, you get the, all these things that are salads that are not salads. Right. Yeah. It sounded like oh, they were yeah, doing yeah. the same thing, but with jello. Like, yes. everything mm-hmm. had jello. Yeah, in the it. fruit salad. The, yes, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jello and everything. Um, there was apparently something where they called it some kind of frappe, okay. but it was you boiled like oysters or clams. Yeah. And just like took the clams out, and then you just had the like water. Oh, I'm, I'm picturing like hot dog water, but with like clams. Mm. It's the frappe. Okay, and that's like no. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's, that's, okay. <laughs> I mean, what um, are you gonna do, right? You gotta eat something. <laughs> but I guess like the first I'm not like eating that. <laughs> there. It's like <laughs> apparently a big chunk and book yeah for like 400 pages gotcha. or oh something. wow 624 yeah. Yeah. holy looking at crap it. Yeah. and the first yeah, yeah. recipe isn't even to like page 70 oh God. because it's all talking about like all the science gotcha. of the cooking yeah yeah and your measurements all this new stuff yeah. that you can new, use to like from then yeah right wow. that you can use to replicate this over and over again yeah I'm trying to think i was trying to remember if there was like another there's all kinds of, there was like stuff of like what a like child should eat to have like a growing, like a good diet growing oh, up. Oh, And there's stuff of like oh. what uh, sick people 
should eat oh. to like make them feel better. Like things that okay, were sure. like nutritionally good for them that's easy for them to digest. And I'm gonna guess it's like five pounds of sugar. <laughs> I would love to see that. Three part. things of lard. They had like it was like toast water. It was like you you had oh, milk it was toast. like a similar thing. Oh, okay. Well, so yeah. the the oyster, but it was like toast. What, um, are, like, are you still hungry, Leah? No. no. <laughs> Weird. No, I'm no longer. We went from hungry. Ruth's oh. Crest steaks to toast water. Like, oh, I'm sure there were some good gross. things, too, but this is, sounds like some weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, toast water, oyster water. Okay, the what else? you says. <laughs> uh, she talked a lot about, like, carbs. Like, oh, yeah, I like carbs, carbs now. Yes, like, sweet. Just, like, <laughs> I know they're bad, like, but I didn't I know them. they had even heard of a carb back then. <laughs> um, but she, you know, she had that, that first cookbook, and then she had another cookbook, and she started touring and giving lectures. Sweet. Especially at, like, hospitals, or teaching, mm. like, the staff. Like, she was, like... You need to make sure that the food that you serve your patients, like, actually looks appealing. Oh. Or they're not going to want to eat it. Weird. And then they're going to take longer to heal Is and get better. Jello came back again? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, color. That's where they started, to, they they started the adding the colors. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's red jello. It's red, red oyster water. Please, oh, please enjoy. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but in uh, 1945, she set up her own cooking school. Oh. And a year later, the Boston Cooking School closed down. <gasps> Did she Buffalo. run them out of business? Apparently. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. <laughs> My uh, my autocorrect said that she she wrote a Columbian. Oh, did she, she? wrote a uh, column oh, column <laughs> in a uh, women's <laughs> magazine <laughs> with her sister. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so you know she's the busy lady, but her sister helped her out with it. Aww. And she ended up she died in 1915 after suffering uh, like several strokes and like her polio flaring back up. Oh, like she was wow. in a wheelchair for a long time. Okay, gotcha. And then she had like a stroke, and then I think she had one like the week that she died. Oh goodness! But that's why they think it was like polio again. Because she if was it in the wheelchair came back. again. Like apparently it doesn't like leave your body. Gotcha. It's, it's, it's like dormant the chicken pox. or something. It's oh. in there all the time. Gotcha. Um, How old was she when she died then? Uh, she died in nineteen. I think she was like fifty-seven or something. She yeah, that's was what I was kind 57. of like. Seven. Okay, I was putting in my. I'm like, nine fifteen. She doesn't seem that old. So yeah. it's all that jello. I'm just saying, there's only so much Ooh. cow knuckle and hooves you can have. <laughs> um, as far as I know, I like I didn't hear anything about her ever marrying or having kids. Okay, because she kind of passed that window. You know, she was right. having polio. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. When the prime time was up, um, but. I don't know if this was in like the first couple of runnings or in her lifetime. It was three hundred thousand copies of her first book or so. Oh, it's something like that's pretty significant. Yeah, right. Millions or something now. So I imagine oh, wow. you know you got like the Bible in her life and then like yeah. Uncle Tom's Cabin and then Fanny Farmer and then Fanny Farmer cookbook. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, there was both a book and then in two thousand and nine a documentary that's. Fanny Farmer's Last Supper, Cute. where Zadu created uh, recipes um, from her cookbook. Oh. And they're doing, like, over an open flame, like what uh, she did back then. Yeah. And one of the ones they did in there, it's a 12-course dinner. And oh. I'm like... Goodness. Like, that's a whole day's worth of food. Yes. 12 courses. Like, I, right. I can't even do two. You're just showing off yeah. with how much food and, <laughs> you know, waste that you are providing then at that point. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. That is crazy. But yay for standardized measurements. Yes. Thank you. Because they were like, (laughs) yeah, you know, a fistful of flour. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. not everyone has the same hand. Exactly, right? I mean, I still think that Italian grandmothers have protested this Mm. idea of standard measurements, you know, continuously. Mm. It's a pinch of this. It's a dab of that. You know, Mm. you don't question it. You just, you season to taste, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I needed those measurements. So I'm Mm. appreciative. (laughs) But no, especially if you're learning to cook. Right. Like yes. You need somewhere to start so you can know kind of what bread normally looks like when it's baking. Right. So you can know if you're Is it done in the them. inside? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is very true. Oh my gosh. Does anybody okay. have any questions? Oh, another oh, recipe yeah, yeah, yeah. was yeah. it was like you take um, bananas and yes. mash them up. Okay. And you take potatoes and mash them up. Hold on. 
<laughs> no. And then you mix them together. No, 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 no. And somehow put them back in the banana peel and cook them. Why? I don't know. It was like some kind of twice baked potato, but with bananas in there too. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> say, just just feel, breathe. It's okay. I feel like somebody's trying to trick me. Like that would be a punked episode. No. It, it, it very Eat much reminds potato. me of, I can't remember his name. There is a very lovely gay man that's on like YouTube and TikTok and he does like vintage recipes oh. and a lot of them sound like they're horrible. Right. And sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. They're yeah. like But it's a surprise, right? Yeah. It's like <laughs> big bing coffee cake. Like they're oh, oh, these like weird gosh. sounding things. Yeah. I can and almost see that working. Great. I don't know why I can see that one working. Know. Why can I see that working? Right, you can make those... brownies with black beans. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. True. yeah. Just true. one box brownie mix and you puree puree, puree the black beans and yeah. Mix it together. I think because I've had like, yeah. you know, a hummus type of black bean mm. so many times that it's like, yeah, I put some coffee in that. <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> It'd still be weird, but I still could see it. Oh, <laughs> Unlike this turducken like thing you're trying to do mm-hmm. with bananas and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sutter Book eventually contained 1,800, over 1,800 recipes. Yeah. I'm Whoa. sure we could find something in there we like. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Delicious. And, and I'm not going to work my way through it. I'm going to put, yeah. um, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's give it to Katie and yes, Katie can exactly. figure, out, <laughs> figure out what we like. But this was all, I mean, she died in 1915. The woman couldn't even vote. Yeah, right. Like, but she was making bank on cookbooks. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That's nice. Starting her own little school. Take it. Perfect, Bon. Do you want to close us up? I gotta find it. I know. I think it's the last page. (laughs) Well, that wraps it up for us this week. Join us next week for another cool gal from history as Gal's Guide to the Galaxy podcast continues. Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.